What's going on guys? In this video, we will talk about how to start a t-shirt business from home. This is something that everyone can do with not a lot of money. We will talk about how to make t-shirts, how to sell them, different tips and tricks, and much, much more. If you're thinking about starting a t-shirt business, this is definitely the video you want to watch. Let's not waste any time and get right into it. So the first thing that you guys will need to know is where to get blank t-shirts wholesale. You will not need to buy anything from China. You can buy everything domestically from the US. The only time you should buy wholesale blank t-shirts is when you're making specific shirts, which we will talk about later on in this video. You can buy blank t-shirts from a website called jiffyshirts.com. I strongly suggest that you guys start with the Gildan soft style t-shirts. They're very good quality and they're cheap. All right, guys, let's talk about the first way to make t-shirts. This is what I recommend everyone starts with, and that's with a vinyl cutting machine, such as a Cricut or a Cameo. These machines only cost a couple hundred dollars, and they're a great way to make professional quality t-shirts at home. Let me show you guys how to make a t-shirt with a vinyl cutter. All right, guys, so in this example, we're going to be using a Cricut machine. So you guys will need a couple things. First, you will need a heat press machine. You will need heat transfer vinyl, which is HTV vinyl. Don't confuse this with regular adhesive vinyl. This vinyl is made specifically for t-shirts. And you will also need heat transfer tape. All right, guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is download the Cricut Design Space app. You guys can download this app online. It's free. After this, we're going to take our image, which is a PNG file, meaning the background is transparent, and we're going to divide it into three parts. We're going to take the one love, cut it, save it as a PNG file, then take the main image, cut it, save it as a PNG file, and save the Bob Marley as a PNG file as well. We will then upload these three files into the program. So we're going to start with the one love, add it to canvas, click make it, mirror, continue, and the Cricut machine is going to start cutting it out. Just so you guys understand, a vinyl cutter is not a printer. It only cuts the vinyl. Now we're going to do the same thing with the next image, add it to the canvas, click make it. We're going to insert the yellow vinyl and it's going to start cutting out again. And now we will do the Bob Marley, click add to canvas. You guys can see it right here, click make it, click mirror, click continue and click make it. And the Cricut machine will start cutting out the text. The next thing we have to do is weed out the designs. If you want, you can use a weeding tool to do this. The vinyl will peel flawlessly. And this is what our one love will look like after it's weeded. We will now do the same thing and weed our yellow vinyl. And once that's done, we're going to do the same thing with the red vinyl. And right here, you guys can see what the designs look like when they're done. The next step is to carefully align the design on the t-shirt and tape it with heat transfer tape. We're going to start with our yellow design. We're going to tape up all four corners and put it on the heat press machine. Make sure the heat press machine is preheated to at least 320 degrees. Place parchment paper over the t-shirt and press for around 30 seconds. After 30 seconds is up, remove the shirt, let it cool off for around 20 seconds, and peel off the plastic layer. As you guys can see, it peels flawlessly. And now we're going to do the exact same thing with all the other vinyl colors. We will now take our green One Love vinyl, carefully align it on the t-shirt, use heat transfer tape and tape it, and press it again for around 30 seconds. It's okay to press vinyl multiple times. Once that's done, we're going to let it cool off and peel. As you guys can see, again, it comes out flawless. And now it's time to do our last part, which is the red Bob Marley vinyl. Again, we're going to carefully align it on the t-shirt, tape it up with heat transfer tape, press it for around 30 seconds, let it cool off, and peel. And just like that, we made a professional store quality t-shirt at home. You can wash the shirt hundreds of times and it will not fade out. The total cost to make the shirt was under $4. You can easily sell t-shirts such as this for around $15 on websites like Etsy. You can buy wholesale heat transfer vinyl for under $1 a sheet and even less if you buy it on places such as Alibaba. Alright guys, now I want to show you how to make rhinestone t-shirts. These are also made with Cricut machines. So in order to make these, you guys will need hot fixed rhinestones. These type of rhinestones have a glue in the back of them so they stick to the shirt. So for this example, we're going to be using a pre-made template. If you guys want to make your own templates, you will have to download the Silhouette software and, and upgrade to the Designer Plus Edition, which costs $50. Instead of using HTV vinyl, we'll be using regular adhesive vinyl. The Cricut machine is going to start cutting out the little holes. And after this, we're going to weed them. We will then pour our rhinestones onto the paper template. And we will use a special rhinestone brush to place the rhinestones into place. The brush is going to flip over the rhinestones into the correct position. And we're going to remove any excess rhinestones. We will then take a clear sheet of adhesive vinyl tape. Place it over the template. Press hard to make sure all the rhinestones stick. And then peel. When you start peeling, you'll see the rhinestones stick perfectly to the clear sheet. After this, we're going to take our clear vinyl adhesive sheet. Align it on the t-shirt. Tape it up. And press it for 30 seconds. We will then let the shirt cool off and peel, and the shirt is done. So this shirt took around a dollar worth of rhinestones, and it costs under $4 to make. And you guys can easily sell t-shirts like this for $15 to $20. All right, guys, now let's talk about how to make sublimated t-shirts. First, let's talk about what sublimation printing is. So sublimation ink is a special type of ink for clothing. When it's heat pressed onto a polyester fabric, it becomes one of the fabric, and it cannot be washed off. Sublimation ink is cheap, and you can easily buy it and fill it into a regular Epson EcoTank printer instead of the original ink. These Epson printers cost a couple hundred dollars. We're going to print on special sublimation paper. So we're going to print our paper with the sublimation ink. We're going to align the paper on the t-shirt. We're going to tape it with heat transfer tape. We will press for 30 seconds, take off the paper, and the shirt is ready. 
But as you guys can see, the shirt came out looking faded. The reason for this is because we pressed at 320 degrees and this shirt was only 50% polyester. If you guys want to make very vivid shirts, you have to press at at least 380 degrees. The shirt on the right was pressed at 380 degrees and was 100% polyester fabric. As you guys can see, there's a very big difference. Alright guys, let me show you how to make all over t-shirts. Alright guys, so the first thing that we have to do is get a large cardboard box and place our blank shirt on it. There are two types of blank sublimation shirts regular all white shirts with these shirts you can print on the front and the back and then there are also blackout shirts blackout shirts have a black back and black sleeves in this example we're going to be using a blackout shirt in my opinion blackout shirts look much better and they're much classier we're going to take a permanent marker and we're going to trace around the t-shirt make sure the distance between the line and the t-shirt is approximately one centimeter to an inch we want the shirt to be fully stretched out on the cardboard so when we print there are no unprinted areas after this, we're going to use a box cutter and cut out the template. If you guys want, you can also use scissors. Cut the neck area just like you guys see right here. After this is done, the next step is to heat press each side of the cardboard. The reason why we're doing this is to flatten the cardboard. When we press our image, we want everything to look equal. After this is done, we're going to put the cardboard inside the shirt. You want to get rid of all the creases and make sure the shirt is completely flat. Also, make sure that all of the white parts of the shirt are facing up. Any area that's not pressed is going to be white and that's going to be a defect after the shirt is done. And you guys don't want that. We'll start printing out all the papers and the next step is to cut them out. When you cut out the pictures, make sure you do not leave any white areas. Any white area that's not cut out is going to be a flaw on the shirt. After this, we're going to use heat transfer tape and tape all the images together. It's very important to use white heat transfer tape. White heat transfer tape will make sure that all the pictures hold up together. After everything is taped up, this is what our image is going to look like. We will put our paper on the table and after this, we're going to take our cardboard box with the shirt and we're going to put it on top of the paper. We're going to line everything correctly and we're going to tape it. Make sure you guys do a very good job taping. After this, the next step is to heat up our heat press machine to 380 to 400 degrees. It's very important that you guys get it to this temperature. If it's any less, you will not have a vivid picture. After this, we're going to place parchment paper over our print and we're going to press each side for around one minute. Make sure you guys use a towel. The heat press machine is going to get very hot. We will press one side, then take the cardboard and insert the next side. We're going to do this for all six sides. After we press each part of the shirt, our shirt is done. We're going to tear off the sublimation paper and here's our finished shirt. As you guys know, sublimation ink becomes part of the fabric. So no matter how many times you wash the shirt, it will not wash off. So as you guys can see, you can easily make shirts just like this right here at home. Now, if you guys want to sublimate on pure white t-shirts with both front and back sides, the process is exactly the same. You're going to make both of your files in Photoshop. You're going to print them out. You're going to press on one side, flip over the cardboard and then press the other side. It's the exact same process. Also, if you guys want to make double-sided shirts, I strongly suggest that you guys use the Sub Live brand shirts. They're very high quality and their shape is perfect. Alright guys, so now let's break down how much it costs to make a shirt. So the blackout shirts cost around $10 on Jiffy shirts, but once you guys start selling a lot of these, you can easily start buying these wholesale on Alibaba.com for around $2 each. The regular sublimation shirts cost around $6 each. Again, you can buy these cheaper on Alibaba. The sublimation paper cost me $15 for 100 sheets, so that means each sheet is 15 cents. But again, if you guys buy these in larger quantities, expect to pay around 5 cents per sheet. So it costs us less than a dollar to print these shirts. So if we can get these shirts for $2 wholesale and it costs us $1 to print, that means it costs around $3 to make each shirt. Alright guys, let's talk about how to make t-shirts with a DTF printer. A DTF printer is a direct-to-film printer. In my opinion, it's the best way to make full-color t-shirts if you're on a budget. So in reality, there's no such thing as a DTF printer. A DTF printer is just a regular Epson printer, which is converted so that it could print with DTF inks. These printers cost a couple thousand dollars. This is a great way to make t-shirts if you're on a budget. The problem with DTF printing is that they require a lot of maintenance and also it takes a long time to print the film. It takes around 10 minutes to print one film. So if you want to make t-shirts and sell them online to other businesses wholesale, DTF printing is not going to work because it's going to be too slow. But if you want to make t-shirts and sell them online individually, DTF printing is perfect. It costs around $1 to print a full-size DTF film. Alright guys, let's talk about DTG printing, which is direct to garment printing. A DTG printer prints directly onto the t-shirt. One of the best DTG printers is the Epson F2100. This printer costs around $15,000. DTG printers print fast. It takes around 2 minutes to print a shirt. So if you're selling to other businesses, you can easily print 100 t-shirts in a couple hours. This is something that's impossible to do with a DTF printer. So if you want to start a real t-shirt business where you sell wholesale to other clients, a DTG printer is the best way to go. It costs around $2 to make a print, but also a lot of people buy wholesale aftermarket inks, which reduces the price to around 50 cents. If you guys do this, this voids the warranty. You can also print DTF films with a DTG printer. Also, just so you guys know, print-on-demand websites such as Printful use DTG printers to make their shirts. 
Now let's talk about the easiest way to make full color photo shirts and that's with the regular inkjet printer. This is done by printing on special vinyl transfer sheets. Let me show you guys how to do this. The first thing you're going to do is mirror the picture and then you're going to print this shirt using any standard inkjet printer. You will not need any kind of special ink, you will use the ink that comes with the printer. When the ink is heat pressed with the vinyl sheet, the ink becomes one with the vinyl and it will not wash off. There are two different sizes of transfer sheets, one is A3 and one is A4. A4 is a standard 8.5 by 11 paper and A3 is a large 11 by 17 paper. In this example, we're going to use A3. In my opinion, A3 is better for making t-shirts. The picture is larger and it looks more professional. I strongly suggest that you guys use PPD brand vinyls. They're by far the highest quality. All right, guys, the next thing that we're going to do is cut off any unprinted parts of the paper. If you guys are cutting around the design, it's okay to leave a tiny bit of white space. It's gonna be unnoticeable when the shirt is pressed on the white t-shirt. After the image is cut out, the next step is to take the image, align it carefully on the t-shirt and place it with the image side facing down. After you guys align everything carefully, the next step is to tape the t-shirt with heat transfer tape. Cut the tape to about an inch long and then tape all four sides of the t-shirt. Make sure you guys do a quick press on the t-shirt before taping to get any wrinkles out. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do is take our heat press, preheat it to around 320 degrees, put the t-shirt into the heat press, cover it with silicone paper. By the way, the silicone paper is going to come with the PPD paper so you guys don't have to buy it separately. And we're going to press for around 15 seconds. After you're done pressing, you will let the t-shirt cool off for about 30 seconds and then you will start peeling. After you peel the shirt, you have to do one more thing and that's stretch the shirt and do another quick five second press to make sure the shirt lasts a long time and can withstand washes. After that's done, the t-shirt is finished. All right guys, now let me tell you the oldest way to make t-shirts and this is the one that I suggest you guys never get into and that's screen printing. There's a huge learning curve and it's not a fun process, but still, let me show you guys how it works. So the first thing that you will do is print your image on a clear plastic film in a black color. You will do this using an inkjet printer. You will then burn this picture onto a mesh screen. This is done by coating the mesh screen with a chemical called emulsion. You will let the screen dry and then you will tape your film onto the screen. You will then shine UV light onto the screen. When UV light hits the emulsion, it hardens and the parts that are not hit with light are image printed in black, stay soft. You then remove the film, rinse out the soft parts with water and you're left with a stencil. You place the stencil on the screen printing machine and you use a tool called a squeegee to push ink through the mesh onto the t-shirt. A finished screen is called an exposed screen. Let's look at what an exposed screen looks like through a microscope. So the polyester netting or the mesh screen holds the dried emulsion. The green stuff right here is the dried emulsion. When UV light hit the emulsion, it became hard. And the black ink that was on the film, these parts were washed out with the water hose. These parts were not exposed to UV light, so they did not harden. When they were washed out, they left a hole in the emulsion. And through these holes, we're going to push our ink onto the t-shirt. So the screen mesh's job is just to hold the emulsion into place. Now there's one more way to make t-shirts and that's with the laser printer. I strongly suggest you guys stay away from this one. The prints are going to be way too expensive to make. DTF is a much better option. If you guys are just starting out, a Cricut machine is the best way to go. It's also the cheapest. All right, thank you guys for watching. We're going to move on to different topics. If you guys want to learn more about making t-shirts, there's a playlist on my channel. Check that out.